I mean, Sonia, Rahul Gandhi. Uh, I agree. How many interviews? Manmohan Singh. How I many agree. interviews did they do? I agree. They were they were as uptight about I journalists agree. and the media. I agree. And far more repressive in their means of putting, you know, Section 66A and banning books and back, banning movies and banning people and all that kind of thing. Didn't support Salman Rushdie being told not to come to Jaipur and not protecting. They have a worse record than uh, the BJP government. Well, they've in been in power for longer, a, and certainly their record on censorship is absolutely abysmal. There is, there is no doubt about that. Um, but I do feel that while the Gandhis were inaccessible, I think Mr. Modi actually believes, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure because I don't know him particularly well, so this is my analysis. He says hello to you. He says hello to me and that's all he says. Uh, that's pretty much all he said except for one other brief conversation that we've had. Um, he believes he doesn't need any media, He believes uh, mainstream media. I think he believes that he's bypassed mainstream media and can talk directly to the citizen. But he said that in the first, I think the first week or so when he became Prime Minister. He said the media is not going to write the agenda, we are. But is that what's happening? I mean, at the moment, this, isn't it kind of needless to paint? Yes, every media should be, should have a slightly adversarial relationship with any government. Mm -hmm. But to paint the media or sections of the media as personal enemies of the BJP, uh, you know, wherein others in the government then become, who are much more accessible actually individually, become fearful that they, you know, that the, that the top man will disapprove of even them, hmm. even them being open. This is a, this is a new phenomenon. And closing the door to any kind of scrutiny or, or policy examination or whatever before it's done. No, even when you, Madhu, even when you're on India's side and you travel, you're, you know, we're, we're all on India's side. And when we travel abroad, we travel as Indian journalists. I have been on two trips that the Prime Minister has made abroad. Other than the Joint Secretary for External Publicity in the Ministry of External Affairs, almost nobody talks to you on or off. I don't, I don't just mean me. Nobody talks to the media. I don't know if there are one or two journalists they like and they talk to them. But generally the media contingent who travel now on their own, and I think that's a fine thing that you pay for the ticket and you don't take an Air India freebie. But, you know, if there's an India-Pakistan meeting happening, there was a time when the national security, okay, so the Gandhi never spoke to anybody either. But the national security advisor would, the, you know, somebody, there will be a principal secretary to the prime minister would, there were people who sat you gave down. Gave the information, yeah. Or gave you your, at least India's point of view. Okay, forget other kinds of stories. At least when it involves other countries, talk to us. Why don't you talk to us? I mean, it's become so frustrating to cover a prime minister's a uh, trip because nobody talks to you. So you're basically dependent on press conferences and that's not journalism. You've written about your relationship with Sunanda and Shashi Tharoor hmm. uh, that grew strained because of your interview with him. 